All right, in the first video, we looked at this idea of a Nash equilibrium, and in this prisoner's dilemma, we found that there was only one combination of choices, where Clyde rats and Bonnie rats, where neither player would want to change their mind. Neither player would want to deviate. Another way people describe Nash equilibria is you want to find a place where neither player regrets their choice after the game is over. And so it's another way of saying that when Bonnie finds out that Clyde ratted and Clyde found out that Bonnie ratted, neither one of them regrets making their choice after they know what the other player has done because they can't make a choice that would make them better off. And so that's the Nash equilibrium right there. They're both going to jail for six years. Now a second way that we look at games like this to try to predict what people might do, and this is a, actually a bit simpler than a Nash equilibrium, is to see if a player has a dominant strategy. Now a dominant strategy just means Let's look at Bonnie, for example. So Bonnie has a dominant strategy. Let me uh, clean this up a little bit here. Uh, Bonnie will have a dominant strategy if we find that she has one best choice that she would like to make no matter what Clyde chooses. That's what a dominant strategy means. So if Bonnie has a dominant strategy to always rat, it means that if Clyde rats, she wants to rat, or if Clyde clams up, she wants to rat. So no matter what Clyde does, she has one clear best decision always to make. Now let me put a little box on top of Clyde's numbers to make it a little easier to see what's going on here. All right, so I put red boxes on top of Clyde's numbers so they don't distract us, and I suggest that this is something you can do also as you're analyzing a game like this. Now, this helps us to clearly see that if we ask Bonnie the question, hey Bonnie, if Clyde rats, that means we're here on the left side, what's your best choice, Bonnie? Do you want to rat and go to jail for six years or stay quiet and go to jail for 10 years? Well, Bonnie's going to tell us, well, if Clyde rats, then I want to rat. And so let me put a little check mark there for Bonnie so we know that's what she wants to do. Now, what about if Clyde clams, clams up, stays quiet? Bonnie, what do you want to do? Would you rather go to jail for zero years by ratting or go to jail for one year if you stay quiet? And Bonnie says, well, again, I would want to rat. That's my best choice. And so no matter, it's as, as I was saying before, no matter what Bonnie thinks Clyde's going to do, she does better by ratting if Clyde rats. She does better by ratting also if Clyde clams up. And this is what we call a dominant strategy. If a player has one best choice, regardless of what the other player chooses, Bonnie always wants to rat. Now let's see, similarly, does Clyde have a dominant strategy? So I've switched the boxes here to cover up Bonnie's numbers so we don't get distracted. But we also have to do something else here to keep us from getting distracted. We have, what we want to do here is cover up one row at a time. This is a helpful way to, to look for Nash equilibria and dominant strategies. What we're doing here is asking Clyde, Clyde, what would you like to do? What's your best choice if you think Bonnie rats? So we're covering up the bottom row here where Bonnie stayed quiet. This lets us focus in on the six years Clyde will get in jail if he rats and the 10 if he stays quiet. So let's ask Clyde, Clyde, what's your best choice if you think Bonnie's going to rat? Clyde says, well, my best choice would be to also rat then because uh, I'd rather go to jail for uh, six years than 10 years. And so let's put a little check mark on Clyde there. Now let's switch Clyde what is your best choice now if you think Bonnie clams up? Putting us in the bottom row. Clyde, what's your best choice? Is it to rat and get zero years in jail or clam up where you spend one year in jail? Well, Clyde says, well, hey, my best choice here is to rat again. And so if I think Bonnie is going to clam up, 
I should also rat. So let's move this out of the way and see what we've learned. Clyde has two check marks here, which tell us that Clyde wants to rat when Bonnie rats. Clyde wants to rat also when Bonnie clams up. So what we found here is that when Clyde makes his decision, he always wants to rat. And if we move these out of the way, we can see that we also learned with the red check marks that Bonnie always wants to rat no matter what she thinks Clyde's going to do. So this is what we call a dominant strategy equilibrium. Both players have one clear best choice, and we assume they're going to make it. It just makes sense that way. And so in addition to what we found in the first video that rat rat is a Nash equilibrium, it's also something a little stronger. It's a dominant strategy equilibrium. Now, a Nash equilibrium says that rat rat is a place where, if that's what happened, neither player would want to change their mind, given the other's choice. Another way, there are a lot of ways people talk about Nash equilibria. Sometimes people will call it a mutual best response. Mutual best response means that rat is a best response when Clyde rats for Bonnie. And rat is also a best response for Clyde when Bonnie rats. So that means they made the best choice given what the other person did. A dominant strategy equilibrium is, is stronger than that. It says, look, it doesn't matter what Bonnie does. Clyde wants to rat. And for Bonnie, it doesn't matter what Clyde wants to do. Bonnie, Bonnie should always rat, rat no matter what she thinks Clyde's going to do. So this rat rat is a very strong prediction. It's a Nash equilibrium and it's a dominant strategy equilibrium. Now, let's look at another couple of games here and get some practice. Now, this next game I want to look at is called Matching Pennies. And Matching Pennies here is a game that people used to play with a big jar full of coins. And one player, player one here, would be called the evens player, where if two people slam down a coin at the same moment, if they're both heads, player one heads, player two heads, player one wins. They win a penny, so plus one. Uh, but player two would lose a penny, minus one. Now similarly, if they're both tails, player one tails on the bottom row, player two tails on the right, player one would win a penny, player two would lose a penny. Player two we call the odds player because if the coins don't match, heads tails or tails heads down here, then player two wins the penny. We want to see is there a Nash equilibrium and is does either player have a dominant strategy? Now let's start with the dominant strategy idea. Um, player one, if you think player two is going to put down a heads, what does player one want to do? Well, player one would want to do a heads because uh, they're the evens player, right? Now if player one thought player two was going to put down a tails, what does player one want to do? Well, player one would then want to put down a tails. So let's uh, put check marks there. This check mark in the top row says player one sometimes wants to play heads. The one in the bottom row says that sometimes they want to play tails. So player one doesn't have a one best choice always. That's a dominant strategy. So uh, let's look at player two. Well, the game is the same for both people. So the, the answers are going to be pretty obvious here for player two. But let's go through and look at it anyway. When player two thinks player one will play a heads, their best choice is to play tails because they win when they're different. So whoop, let me put a check mark over here on the red one for player two. But when player two thinks that player one is going to do tails, then their best choice is to do heads on the left. Player two heads on the left, and then they'd win. And so let's put a little check mark here on that one. Now let's look and see what we have. Let's move everything out of the way. Well, one check mark for player one is on heads and one is on tails. Same thing for player two. One check mark is on tails and one is on heads. Now additionally, what we see is there, there are no two check marks in any one box. 
this is a shortcut kind of way to look for Nash equilibria. Now there's no dominant strategy because player one has one check mark on heads and one on tails. Player two has one on heads and one on tails. So neither player has one best choice. There's no Nash equilibrium because there's no box where each player wants to be there. That's what a check mark is telling us in this case that if there's a check mark on heads and heads in this box that would mean that that is player one's and player two's best choice given what the other did but we don't see that there's no Nash equilibrium here and so there's no dominant strategy and no Nash equilibrium and if, for this game it just kind of makes sense in a case where one player is winning a penny and the other is losing, losing, but you, if you're losing, you can always win by changing your mind, there's not going to be any place where both people are happy.